and I'm going to talk a little bit about Ronald Wilson Reagan and the fact that he's been used as an icon for the uh, conservative Republicans and conservative independents for years. And I've uh, got a special relationship with Ronald Reagan in the fact that in 1966, when I was in my uh, mid-twenties, I ran for the state assembly in a contested race. And that was the same year Ronald Reagan was running for the governor of the state of California. Uh, a year or two earlier, he gave a speech called The Time for Choosing, which was terrific. It was, it was right on. And uh, for that reason, um, I ignored the rumors that I had heard about uh, Ronald Reagan and uh, endorsed him for governor. And uh, sadly, I found out that once he became governor, he did the exact opposite of what he had promised the people. He put in the first gun laws, the Mulford Act. He did the executive orders by regionalizing the state of California. He supported with the ex-Governor Brown uh, the changing of the state constitution, which allowed uh, regional uh, developments of AMBAG and ABAG and SCAG, which are uh, trans government operations uh, from counties and cities uh, throughout, throughout the state of California. And this fit into an earlier plan that was uh, uh, driven by uh, Nelson Rockefeller in a, uh, a book called The New Federalism. Um, when I looked deeper into Ronald Reagan, um, uh, I wasn't the only one that was snowed. There was uh, Anthony Hilder that uh, uh, gave him a, a break on, on this run for governor. He thought maybe he changed. People can and do change, and we all pray for that. Um, but uh, he had sponsored an album by Myron Fagan, who is uh, famous both in Broadway, silent movies, and in, in the talkies. And he put together a uh, record called Red Stars, uh, Red Stars. And in Red Stars, there was uh, Ronald uh, Wilson Reagan as one of the Red Stars. And um, a lot of people don't know that, but he was involved in uh, some pretty heavy-duty uh, uh, items. Um, during the, uh, the time when China was in contest between uh, communist Mao Zedong and Chiang Kai-shek, Reagan joined an outfit called the Citizens for a Far Eastern Policy, and that was uh, designated as, as communist, and his name is right here in an article uh, about that. Um, some of the people that were involved uh, with that included Agnes Smidley, who was involved with the sword spy ring, one of the most successful spy rings in, in history, in all of history. Um, there was uh, Hugh DeLacy, uh, who was a communist organizer, uh, and that uh, California Senate fact-finding committee said he switched and turned at every switch of Soviet policy. He was an organizer also in Santa Cruz. Uh, there's an interesting connection with the Santa Cruz uh, uh, nexus there in the fact that uh, Leon Panetta was in contact with Hugh DeLacy, in fact honored this communist organizer at the Loudon Nelson Center in Santa Cruz. And um, because Leon Panetta actually was campaigning for Nelson Rockefeller because of his book called The New Federalism uh, in the early 60s. And he went to the uh, White House um, with Richard Nixon uh, and uh, was part of the Kissinger team to get Nixon out and to get Nelson Rockefeller uh, made president. They got as far as having Gerald Ford, Bilderberger, appointing uh, Nelson Rockefeller as vice president of the United States. But anyway, back to um, Ronald Reagan and his support of, you know, uh, communist Mao. Let me do a little bit more on the... On the uh, uh, Committee for a Democratic Far Eastern Policy. There's a few other names you should know besides uh, Hugh DeLacy. Another name uh, with this group is Herbert Aptecker, and he was the theoretician of the American Communist Party. Uh, Victor Perlow was connected with one of the Soviet spy rings out of Washington, D.C. I already mentioned Agnes Smidley. There's uh, 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 scores of others that would just add on names, but... Uh, uh, let it be known that Ronald Reagan helped uh, the communists and helped. And as uh, David Rockefeller said, uh, Mao's taking over of uh, communist China was one of the greatest experiments ever. And you can find Rockefeller's quote in there. And of course, it involved killing 80 uh, million of their own people. Um, 
but that never that never stuck to uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. Reagan also belonged to the uh, American uh, Veterans Committee. And again, according to the California Senate uh, on American Activities report, it says that the American Veterans Committee primarily uh, preliminary reports indicate that the group was under communist influence, and Reagan belonged to both the local and the uh, national uh, organization. And uh, he became, he, he was pushed, he saw that uh, uh, Reagan could be used. He, one of the uh, more active uh, positions Ronald Reagan took was for the uh, mobilization for democracy. They put on a uh, series uh, on uh, TV, a, thir a 13 series uh, played on uh, KLAC, um, and it was uh, considered subversive by the House Committee on Un-American Activities. Um, uh, once again, the California State Senate said the committee reports has reported uh, communist, uh, as, as a communist front and that uh, it was dependent upon their secret loyalty to the Soviet Union. So we're, we're talking about Ronald Reagan, and you'll see an album cover that talks about red stars over Hollywood, and Ronald Reagan was one of them. Uh, it turns out that uh, later in, in 46 and 47, when the CIA was being formed, that uh, he was picked up as a uh, potential uh, for the uh, power elite. And uh, his handler was a man by the name of Cord Meyer. Cord Meyer was, uh, went to a school uh, of a grouping in New England called the Ten Schools Admission Organization. These are schools, prep schools, that filter people into secret societies. The Ten Schools uh, Admission Organization is a series of prep schools in uh, New England. And what they do is they funnel people into uh, secret societies or into uh, positions for global control for a global uh, world government. And Cordmeyer went to one of those schools and he belonged to one of those uh, secret societies at Yale that Dr. Anthony Sutton uh, revealed, one of them which is uh, Skull and Bones. Um, and uh, he was Ronald Reagan's handler. In fact, he was the head of the United World Federalist, you know, which obviously pushes for a world government. And Ronald Reagan, of course, was right along with him, and he was on the letterhead for the United World Federalist for over uh, 13 years. Um, we find also um, that he was part of the world peace uh, through law. And again, if you understand this, this globalistic mindset of Ronald Reagan, uh, you'll understand what he did, not what he said. Just as the, the cult followers of Obama isn't doing what he said about getting the uh, closing Guantanamo or uh, doing a lot of other uh, sensible things about being transparent, etc. But we find some of the people that Ronald Reagan is associated with on this world peace through law. Uh, we find Alan Cranston, who was a founding member of Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission. Uh, we find Norman Cousins, who was also a head of the United World Federalist for a while. Um, we find uh, Robert M. Hutchins. Robert M. Hutchins was the head of the uh, Ford Foundation's Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions in Santa Barbara. They had written a new constitution to replace the one that we presently have. Um, in fact, the uh, man that wrote a world constitution was one of his hirees at, uh, at the uh, Center for the Democratic Study of, uh, for the Center for Democratic Institutions. Um, we also find on here uh, Dory Sherry, who is the head of the ADL, which is uh, hardcore, um, hardcore left, attacking uh, people that were concerned about uh, communist activity and, and the uh, dis uh, diminishing of our constitutional rights. But that was uh, Ronald Reagan's um, entry into, uh, into politics. He was picked up on television to give him a, a popular uh, uh, venue by General Electric. He was given a TV series, and General Electric picked him up and sent him around the countries giving a tailored speech uh, talking about free enterprise. Again, if people go back to American secret establishment, they look up General Electric, they look up the, uh, the uh, 
financing behind the uh, Bolshevik Revolution and the financing of Hitler, they'll find that General Electric was right in there at an address at 120 Broadway, which uh, uh, repeatedly comes up in any researcher's historical uh, treatment of, of, of an investigation of secret societies and the uh, World War I and World War II. And the funding of both of our enemies, the, the Communist and the Soviet Union, and uh, Hitler in, in Germany. Um, so Reagan got this wholesome, all-American uh, treatment by traveling the country, uh, giving his speech a time for choosing, and running successfully for governor. And from the governor's uh, uh, cat seat, year, years later, uh, he <clears throat> ran for the United States president at that time. Uh, myself and other people knew of his skullduggery, so we were uh, not not supporting him. Party and went to Detroit uh, during the convention that uh, that he uh, uh, was nominated at, and at that convention, everybody was uh, thinking he promised that uh, he would not appoint anybody that didn't follow his philosophy. He tacked uh, 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 Carter. Uh, because of his appointment of members of the CFR and Trilateral Commission both in New Hampshire and Florida and said he wouldn't do that. Yet his very transition committee, which uh, he had already appointed uh, before, the, before the convention, about 80% of them were members of the Trilateral Commission or the Council on Foreign Relations. Four years earlier, he had run for, the, for president of the United States, and he picked the, the senator that was most left-wing of all the Republicans, which was Senator Richard Schweiker from, from Pennsylvania. And of course, when he runs for president this time, he picks a man that's skull and bones, and it was uh, Cord Meyer, who came from one of those secret societies out of Yale, that was his handler. So you've got the tie of the same secret societies uh, from the, the Yale campus. Um, and then you start looking over his uh, appointees, and he's got them for the Department of Commerce, Malcolm Baldridge, and you, you know, you've got uh, uh, different members occupying important uh, positions. He appointed Gene Kirkpatrick uh, to be uh, ambassador to the United mm -hmm. Nations. And, and most conservatives think oh, how wonderful and a plotter and think she's a, the greatest thing uh, since sliced bread. And of course, she was on the letterhead of the Industrial League for Democracy uh, right up until their sponsoring, including their sponsoring of Tom, Tom Hayden's SDS. Um, but, and then he, he came along that, that same year, in uh, 1982, two years later, I ran for Congress and was, won a contested primary, uh, went back to D.C. at an invitation of the White House that invited in mass winners of the various primaries. And the uh, position then was that no congressional candidate would get money that opposed Ronald Reagan or pointed out the lack of transparency that he was giving the, the country the largest tax increase in American history. And so uh, the invitation to we uh, congressional people that won the nomination was that we'd be given introductions to some, some lobbyists and cabinet people and have some information we could take back to use for the general election. But instead, they put us in the East Room of the White House, stood up on a platform, and we were to applaud like seals, like most of them did. And uh, he was taking credit for uh, cutting the tax budget when he gave the largest tax increase in American history. And of course, he started sending wheat to the Soviet Union, and it was uh, Americans were getting the shafts. He, was, he did an executive order which transferred a, a steel plant to uh, communist China signed by uh, George Shultz, who used to be a president of the Council on Foreign Relations. But Ronald Reagan uh, is not who conservatives say <laughs> he is.